So Bitcoin fell 19% yesterday, I guess exactly as predicted, to the $43,000 level of support. Immediately, Peter Schiff started to tweet about genocide in El Salvador and how Bitcoin is murdering people, women, children. But there are a few reasons why I'm still bullish. This and much more coming your way. Stay tuned, the podcast is about to begin. Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money and today is Wednesday, we are at the middle of the week and there's a few candles to analyze today, but especially the one that we saw yesterday and I want to make some comparison to what we saw recently when Bitcoin went down 56% and I'm going to show you something on the monthly chart, but let's go to the chart to see what is really happening. Okay, let's first of all, let's start with the price to time model, just a quick update. And of course, we are going down. So this week is red, but we are still above the 20 period SMA, the green line you guys see here. Don't forget, keep always in mind that when I show you the price to time model, this is a log chart, a weekly log chart. And so the weekly SMA, the green 20 period weekly SMA, is also a bit different from the one I really show you guys on the other charts because I only use log charts on the price of time model. The other ones are linear and so the 20 period SMA, the green line looks a bit different. It's still not pointing up as this was here. But however, we retested on the log chart, we had a retest of the 20 week SMA, the green line there and immediately went above it. So right now, we have little room to the end of the square and of course the actual period of October that we were planning to have as a probable top is looking less and less probable. But in any case, we still continue to believe that the top will continue to be there waiting for us. What I mean is I'm not convinced that this is over and I have very good reasons to believe that in fact we are still in the bull market and after the 56% correction we had around here we are going to continue the bull market with the second leg up and probably see a top later this year or beginning next year but let's see how that goes and of course when we do sometime after that and when the top is confirmed I will come back and analyze what went wrong or what went right with the price of time model so uh, According to the price of time model, that's it. I don't have anything else to tell you guys. Let's just take a look at the total market cap today. And uh, of course, I forgot to mention this on that small video I published yesterday, 1 minute 30 seconds, which by the way, went a bit viral. So welcome to all of you guys that joined the channel since last night to now to the present time. And thank you for joining. And I hope you like the content here. So just a small word to welcome you guys. And I hope you continue to share with your friends, of course, this content, uh, if you find it relevant for you and for others. So let's just take a peek at the total market cap. As I said, also in the past, as soon as we go above this red rectangle here for the Fibonacci retracement tool, uh, for those that are new to the channel, I have a configuration for the Fibonacci retracement tool a bit different from usual the usual one. And I have these levels, the green and the red levels here, which uh, give me good opportunities and, and good areas to go long or to go short, depending on the market conditions. And of course, anything in the middle is the dumb zone, what I call the dumb zone and the gamble zone. So anything that you plan to do in between those areas will actually be gambling because no one knows the future. And this is not what this channel is for. Uh, we just make... Um, here we just make analyze not make we analyze the probabilities of the market going up or down uh, usually i say there's more probabilities of doing this than doing that and in case that we have a or b options to have also a plan a 
and plan B. That's how I trade. That's my strategy. I don't try to guess where the price of Bitcoin will be tomorrow. I just have a plan A if it goes up. I have a plan B if it goes down. And that's my strategy. Very simple, in fact. So what I see here right now is that we went above the red line here of the Fibonacci retracement tool. And of course, as I said in a few videos before, this is the area where I was planning to take some profit. So in any case, uh, the ones that follow the channel, they know that I already had a few levels defined here for the total market cap. This one was defined on uh, past Saturday during the live stream when I was asked, what levels on the total market cap are you expecting for a big retracement if it occurs, which actually I was expecting as soon as we passed the red levels here of the Fibonacci retracement tool. And during the live Saturday, I analyzed this chart exactly like this is. And I said, well, the most obvious levels are this one and this one. So I was expecting a retracement to this level, $1.86 trillion, if we had a big retracement on Bitcoin. Of course, dragging all the other shit coins behind it and moving to this area, which in fact really happened. So I'm just going to remove the circle because this was intended just for you guys to see, but I'm going to zoom in and here it is. The first level of retracement I plotted on Saturday during the live stream and exactly that happened also. I never published this on the 1 minute 30 seconds video because I didn't think it was so relevant as the other one you guys know from that video about Bitcoin going to 43,000. However, we are still going up on the trend channel and the context channel is going down. So we have a high volatility uh, structure of the price action here, but the moving average is going up and the trend channel is going up. And the least, the least at all the least levels that I'm expecting, if something really bad occurs to Bitcoin and of course to the total market cap, because Bitcoin is king, is something around the 1.55 trillion, which I don't really believe we are going to see soon. But as I said before, we don't guess the future. So it's very, very probable that we could see something really weird as we have seen for many times during Bitcoin's existence. So I'm just, uh, you know, digressing here. But in any case, this is the least level of retracement I would expect. But I would not believe that we would go below the 1.7 trillion at this point because we also have very, very strong support around this second green level here, the second green line, which is the resistance of February this year and also support in many other occasions and resistance also after the 56% retracement. The three times we tried to break above this, this resistance, uh, we were not able to do it. Bitcoin did not do it. And only here around August, the beginning of August, when we broke finally this resistance to the upside, then it became support. So actually, guys, it's really easy to find support and resistance lines on charts. And the fact that I, I plotted that rectangle there, uh, the one you know from the short video of yesterday, around the $42,000, $43,000 level of support, that was not such a big guess. That was just analyzing support and resistances. And of course, knowing the, um, you know, looking at the price structure and seeing something uh, which to me was really obvious, but in any case, I guess lots of people enjoy the fact that I uh, exactly pointed out that this would go to 43,000 and it did. So it was very good, of course, in that sense. But let's uh, look just here. I wanted to show the Pro Indicators framework. So right now we retraced exactly to that. And this is the one you remember from that video, of course. I will just move the chart to the four hour chart so you guys can see it better. This is the chart that you saw in that video. And of course, we have the big retracement here after the sell signal I got here at the top. And of course, this was already overextended. And one of the reasons, so let me explain now, for those that are new to the channel, and of course, uh, also the ones that already follow the channel for some time, but it's never too late to repeat again, why I said that we would retrace, probably would retrace here and go to this level. So one of the signs was, of course, this uh, bearish price action divergence. 
which is uh, here plotted on the screen by these green lines that unite the points where we started to go up after the reversal of the price action around 28.8. And you just have to unite the points uh, here at the indicator. So this yellow line in zigzag going up, this is the indicator that plots uh, that line. The green ones, this is me. And of course, you just have to unite the points. So first point was here, second point was there, and you have to put a line in between them all the time to the top. And you see that this starts to make a curve line here. And when this happens, of course, sorry guys, I just messed up the chart. When this happens, let me just compress it a bit more. So when this happens and you see this angle in between the lines, that means that this is a bearish price action divergence. So it means that we are getting overextended and the bulls are losing momentum, of course. And so we are also having the increased probability of a retracement, which was also um, you know, given to me by the charts and by the indicator with this sell signal here at the top. And as you see here, guys, every time I had a red triangle on the chart, of course, the indicator indicated me that or told me that we are in for a small retracement. However, this one was, was already overextended. We had a squeeze and this, um, we, we had a squeeze in the price action here. And this was again plotted by the indicator, this purple area, this indicated a squeeze. And of course, I started to see that really, really soon we are going to have a correction. So from the top here to the bottom here of this correction, this was only 19%. I guess everyone freaked out yesterday, but 19% for Bitcoin is just peanuts. I've seen much, much bigger corrections. In fact, we just saw one in uh, April or May or something, 56% from the all-time high of 64,000. So guys, 19%, this is nothing. Uh, I was really enjoying the fact that I was watching the charts live at, at exactly that time. I did not record a video yesterday because there is no point recording a video when everyone is really hot-headed and completely stressed out because of the price action. So there's no point. Uh, you just have to cool down, wait one day, wake up the next day and look at the charts in a rational way. So that's what I like to do. So that's why I'm recording the video today. So there is no absolutely no reason to think that we are going to see Bitcoin going to zero or something like that. Right now, we are exactly at the middle of the trend channel, also the middle of the context channel. Nothing really relevant here telling me that we are going to be bearish soon. For now, the 42, 43,000 level of support, which is this green small rectangle you guys see here, continues to support the price. Uh, so, you guys know um, there's nothing really, really important. I'm just waiting for another retracement retest of the 43,000. Probably this will occur because every time that happens, uh, we go with very, very big volatility. We go really low and then we go up in a fury and again, come back down to retest the price. So that's what I'm actually waiting to happen. But let me just show you guys a comparison here on the MRI strategy chart, which is the ones I uh, also use. I use two indicators, two strategies, and I combine them together to get the most um, out of them both. So I can, you know, get the good information from the pro indicators and also the good information from the MRI. And in this case, I just want to show you guys this. This is the daily chart of Bitcoin right now. And this is the price structure we have. And do you guys remember any uh, occasion recently where we had this kind of price structure supported also by the 50 period SMA, which is the yellow line you guys see here. I'm going to zoom in and just asking the question so you guys can think about it. Of course, I'm not expecting anyone to reply uh, or to answer my question. Probably in the comments I will get some. But do you guys remember this structure? And then finding support at the 50 period SMA. Okay, so I'm going to show you the monthly chart. Does it look like something that you've seen before? Big drop down, really volatile move, then went up, again went down to retest the same levels, went back up, and it became a kind of a doji uh, reversal of the price action candle. So this was the big drop we had, let me just confirm, in May, of course, 
So this is the big drop we had in May. And then after that, we have the exact same price action structure. Big volatile candle going down. Again, retest of the same levels. Then went up from the doji. In this case, a really weird doji because we also had a lot of the uh, price going to the upside and again back down and then it closed there and then this doji became the price action reversal candle for the monthly and the next candle of course retested again the same levels and then started to go up so if you guys remember this is the exact same structure you have here on the daily chart so what can i say you have all the clues i believe that this is the big volatile candle you just saw before and before that, I will also show why the 50 period SMA, I was talking about it just a few minutes ago. And of course, the second one is becoming a doji right now. So it's very possible that we still retest this level or the next candle retests this level, finds support again on the 50 period and reverses the price action. I don't see any bearish signals, really relevant bearish signals. Also, the RSI on the daily is just getting very, very close to my uh, trend line of support here at the RSI. This uh, trend line already supported a lot of times. So in this case, I believe we could still go a bit lower, test the trend line here, the white trend line at the RSI, uh, on the RSI uh, chart, and then reverse the price action a bit and continuation to the upside for the second leg of the bull cycle, which I believe we are still in a bull cycle. So let's see how that goes. But I, as you guys know, uh, when I make any mistakes, I will be the first one to uh, talk about them here in the videos or on the live streams so uh, you can count on that uh, with me so let's go to the weekly and on the weekly of course you have it here the 50 period has been supporting the price action in many critical levels so we had this critical level of course that i believed by then also this was going to be the lowest point for this retracement here we needed this big consolidation and then the 50 period, um, you know, bounced, the price action bounced immediately from the 50 period SMA and we started to go up again. But there is also another very, very important, and this is one of the most important signals that I can give you today. Let me just remove this from here because I don't need that line anymore. And look at this. This is one of the things I was talking about weeks ago when I said those three conditions that I needed in order to see that this is not a dead cat bounce is just a reversal of the price action and continuation of the bull cycle. Look, we did not even touch the 20 week SMA on the linear chart. So in order for me to become bearish again, we have to cross this 20 period SMA, which is the weekly one, the green line here. We have to cross it to the downside and close at least a weekly candle below this 20 period SMA. We did not even touch it yesterday. There's a, there's a gap here. So I'm not bearish in any way. I'm not worried in any way right now. This was a 19% correction, which actually it's almost over because almost half of the candle is recovered already. And we are now uh, around the 46 and a half, 46,000 level of support. So, guys, that's it. I don't want to, uh, you know, bore you guys to death with more analysis. But for today, this is what I have for you. I just wanted to show you guys that I'm not really worried about this 19% drop of yesterday. It was, yes, a very volatile move. It occurred very, very quickly. In about two hours, we saw 20% of gains completely vanish from Bitcoin. But in any case, I don't see any indications at this point that we are in for a bearish uh, momentum of this market. So I just wanted to leave you guys with that. This is what I had for you today. Of course, if you enjoy this content, gently touch the like button and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. Don't forget the bell uh, icon and the notifications so you get notified every time I upload a video or I start a live stream. And for now, I'm just going to leave you guys with the usual wise words. All right, let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Exactly, guys. Let's roll and let's be really careful out there in the markets. And I'm sure I will see you on the next one. Until then, bye-bye.